Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 3rd July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is given by Socrates. So if you have completed your ethics, that is GS paper 4, especially chapter 5th, that is thinkers and reformers, you have no about this Aristotle, Socrates, Plato. The Socrates, he is one of the important philosopher, I can say, and he gave a number of ideas. So according to him, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. So you have to be kind for everyone. So it is very much true for UPSC aspirants because many students, they are staying in this PG's hostels and sometimes they will be doing some combined studies with their friends. So if you are kind, then you will be automatically benefited from your friends in this long journey of UPSC preparation. So now let us try to see first topic. Title says United Nation Conference I Step Towards High Seas Agreement. So here this article which is mainly focusing on high sea. So if we are talking about there is one important convention that is United Nations Convention of Law of Seas and Clause. And clause which mainly talks about territorial jurisdiction of a country okay nearby water body so what is a territorial jurisdiction so how much law your country can use that in water so that is the thing which mainly said in this unclause so in this unclause actually in 2022 prelims there was one question so you have to know that so it mainly talks about internal water territorial water contagious zone and as well as exclusive economic zone so beyond this exclusive economic zone that is 200 nautical miles from the baseline so it mainly comes in this high seas so regarding this high seas there is one important problem or challenge that you are facing here is there is no there is no proper agreement which mainly talks about this high seas so this article which mainly says that in this united nation ocean conference we want to move towards agreement regarding this high seas so it is one of the important step that I can say. So now this article is important from your international relations which mainly comes in the GS paper too. So if you see context it mainly says that recently United Nations Ocean Conference of 2022 which is mainly focusing on protection and as well as sustenance of ocean ecosystem of the world. So in this United Nations Ocean Conference you are mainly focusing on protection and as well as sustenance of ocean ecosystem of the world and this conference which mainly co-hosted by governments of Kenya and as well as Portugal. So this might be a question which is important from your state public service examination. So if you see details it mainly says that so this United Nations Ocean Conference of 2022 which mainly aligned to this sustainable development goals that is especially 14. So this sustainable development goal 14 which mainly talks about life below water it mainly talking about life below water and this conference or this sustainable development goal 14 which mainly focusing on there is a need for scientific knowledge and as well as marine technology such that we can build ocean resilience okay it is mainly focusing on ocean resilience how can we build this ocean resilience especially through scientific knowledge and as well as through marine technology so if you are talking about key agenda of the conference, so what are the key agenda? So first one here is we are mainly focusing on deep sea mining. First one is moratorium on this deep sea mining. So deep sea mining is very important, especially if you are talking about India. So here we are mainly focusing on polymetallic nodules, right? So polymetallic nodules. So in the deep sea, we have number of minerals and if you are extracting them, that will be very much helpful for that economy of that country. So here we are mainly focusing on pushing for moratorium on this deep sea mining of rare metals and we are mainly focusing on electric vehicle battery construction and we are focusing on digging and gauging of oceanic floor by machines. Okay, whenever we are going for deep sea mining, there are some concerns. So in the deep sea, we are mainly using some machines and some drillers such that what happened, it will have some impact on this marine ecosystem which is present there. So it will have some damage or it will lead to some destroying of these deep sea habitats. And if you are talking about carbon sequestration, so we are mainly focusing on this carbon sequestration to boost ocean's capacity and to soak up 
carbon dioxide and we are focusing on enhancing natural things for example mangroves through geoengineering schemes so carbon sequestration is very very important because as you all know we are releasing lot of carbon dioxide into atmosphere so where this carbon dioxide is going to sinks so we have carbon sinks for example you can talk about rainforest or evergreen forest and even oceans are the best source of this carbon sinks right so here wherever we are going for increasing of this mangroves that will be also helpful for enhancing the natural sinks and we can go for geoengineering schemes for that purpose and next one is blue deal so in this blue deal we are mainly focusing on sustainable sustainable use of ocean resources so we are focusing on sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth and we are also focusing on global trade investment innovation to create sustainable and resilient ocean economy and we are mainly focusing on blue food especially because so it is a one of the important livelihood for the number of people as well okay it is about blue deal so blue deal you have to remember that it is mainly focusing on sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth and if you are talking about high seas so high seas are unregulated so as you all know beyond this exclusive economic zone that is beyond this 200 nautical miles so there is no proper agreement or there is no proper legal framework like what are the things that can be done and that cannot be done in this high seas because as you all know oceans which mainly covers about 70% of our earth surface only 30% of our, uh, our earth surface is having land so here here because of this large extent of this ocean it have a great potential especially to provide food and as well as livelihood for the billions of people but one cause of concern here is so in this area in this high seas there is no proper regulation of activities so that will leads to a lot of uh, great extent of damage to our earth and if you're talking about threat to ocean yes because of global warming because of climate change pollution plastic pollution especially acidification marine heat waves so these are some important threats to our oceans so if you see this infographic that you can see on screen it mainly talks about climate change okay so here recently we studied one article that because of increasing of our temperature of this oceans that means indirectly whenever there is a climate change that will leads to global warming so because of this global warming there will be increasing of temperature so whenever there is increasing of atmospheric temperature automatically there will be increasing of oceanic temperature so because of this oceanic temperature that will leads to decreasing of dissolved oxygen content so because of this decrease dissolved oxygen content so whatever the habitat what are the ecosystem that is especially marine ecosystem that is present inside the oceans they will be not getting proper amount of oxygen and they will be suffocating so that will leads to decreasing of number of species of animals and flora and fauna that is present in this water will be decreased okay so this is some important impact and this is the recent study i can say and this information i got from this down to earth and i also write i also wrote one article regarding this topic as well and if you are talking about uh, what are the impacts of this climate change so we are talking about impacts of the climate change so because of this global warming because of this global warming we can see there is increasing of sea level or sea level rise is accelerating so because of this increasing of sea level that will leads to the flooding in this coastal area so coastal areas will be inundated under the water and next one here is we can see drowning of our wetlands as well and next one is because of increasing of temperature ocean temperature that will leads to acidification so whenever ocean acidification which mainly happen that leads to bleaching of corals and next one is we can see because of less amount of oxygen the dissolved oxygen in this water that will leads to mainly uh, the algal blooms so marine mammals will going to become sick and next one is habitats so lower oxygen levels that will lead to suffocating and some species they mainly going to have going to die because of the suffocation and next one is acidification so more acidic water which is very much harm for the mammals and as well as shells and even corals or sturgeons are present in the water and next one is so fisheries 
so whenever because of this increase in the ocean temperature yes the fishes they might be migrated from one place to another place not only fishes for this case but even whatever the organisms which are present in this ecosystem they will start moving from one place to another place for example from tropical areas to polar areas so because of this what happened that will lead to some other problems like invasive species like that so these are some important problems and if you see the next infographic which mainly talks about what are the benefits of a healthy ocean globally yes whenever we are having healthy oceans so oceans which mainly cover 70 percentage of our earth surface so it have a large capacity or potential to promote livelihood for 90 percent of the people so most of the people who derive their livelihoods from this fishing they are mainly developing the they are mainly present in these developing countries and about 350 million jobs they are linked to these oceans globally and if our oceans are not healthy becomes uh, becomes dead, detrimental for this 350 million people who are solely dependent on these oceans for their livelihood and next one is it will also boost marine tourism so tourism is the world's largest industry and if you're having a good oceans or healthy oceans means it is an asset for your country and next one is coastal protection so yes when you are having the good and healthy oceans so that will be helpful for maintaining of proper wetlands grass sea grass beds mangroves coral reefs etc and next one here is regarding resilience so a healthy ocean will cope with negative impacts better and next one here is climate about 50 percentage of the oceans they are mainly produces oxygen that we breathe and it absorbs about carbon dioxide that means they are acting as a carbon sinks so if there is no healthy that is when we see improper oceans are there without proper uh, healthy then what happened that will leads to increasing of carbon dioxide levels they are not going to absorb this carbon dioxide that will further leads to global warming glacier melting increasing of sea level rise flooding etc and next one is food so fisheries they are the important source of protein for the billions of people so if you are comparing with the mutton and as well as chicken so comparatively fish it is a uh, low cost so here this fish which is mainly acts as a proteinous diet for the number of people who are present in the country so for all these things yes automatically we need healthy oceans and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding new genus of tree shrew from Ram Nagar in Jammu and Kashmir can provide precise age estimates for the locality. So here we need to focus on tree shrew. So I want to give you one uh, tip here for the students. So if there, if there is any species which is present in news means you have to type uh, in the Google and you have to see the first image. Then you will be getting some idea how this soil of flora and fauna looks like. And after that you can see IUC and red list and the protection status. And you have to see where is this uh, animal or uh, a plant which is mainly seen which is a natural habitat so for example if you see it is present in Jammu and Kashmir means so in which national park which can see that so and after that you have to see other national parks in that so and so states or other some animal species which are mainly seen in news so in this way you can add a value here and because of this one word okay one animal name or one um, bird name or one butterfly name or one species name you are going to connect all the different ideas different things such that we can go for a broad knowledge and that pictographical memory is very important for clearing of your prelims so this article is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 and now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so why it is in use so recently recently scientists they spotted fossils so fossils of small mammal and this mammal which mainly resemble like a squirrel which mainly present on the plants and this is called as tree shrew okay tree shrew actually it mainly belongs to new genus and species from this Jammu and Kashmir so if you see this is the image of that tree shrew it will be like a squirrel and the mouth it is somewhat diff uh, somewhat like this okay pointed nose will be there so if you see details it mainly says that so this tree shrew which mainly represents the oldest record of fossil okay in this Sivalix region so here again Sivalix came so this Sivalix you have to refer in your geography in CRT book we have trans Himalayas we have greater Himalayas lesser Himalayas and as well as Sivalix so what is the difference between this trans Himalayas and Sivalix so you have to know this and you have to know what where this duns are present okay 
whether in Trans Himalayas or the Sivalix. So in this way, you can do some comparative study. So if you are reading current affairs and you can connect with your static syllabus, then almost 50 to 60 percent of your preparation will be done there itself. So many students, they will be ignoring this fact. So they will be thinking like, yes, I'm reading only newspaper. I'm not going to connect with the static, but this is a wrong approach. Right. So here, this is the, for the first time we can see the oldest record of this fossils in the Sivalix region and the time period which was like 2.5 to 4 million years in the region. Actually, there's two periods which mainly refers to a small species of East Indian and Asiatic insectivores. That means they mainly feed on insects and this mainly belongs to the family 2PDA and here it mainly resembles the squirrels in size and arboreal habitats. And the nose will be long and pointed than compared to the of the squirrels. And if you're talking about these tissues, they are very, very rare elements of this fossil record. And they found that they mainly present in this Cenozoic era. So Cenozoic era means nothing but 66 million years ago. And if you're talking about dietary analysis, so whenever we are going for this dietary analysis, yes, we can try to understand what, which kind of food and what kind of fruit they used to eat and what is the pattern of uh, uh, pattern of habitat that mainly present and even we know about this ecosystem at that time like which of the fruits they were grown and and whether they are feeding on the hard foods or the soft foods like that we will be gain, knowing about the information so whenever we are analyzing this uh, patterns we understand the quantity and as well as nutrition quality of food which mainly consumed by the individual as well so we're talking about significance identification of time sensitive dental features and space in the current collection which mainly helps to provide more precise age estimates okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to say next topic it is talking about isro poem platform so here we need to know about what is this poem so there's a very very high chance of getting question in your prelims and as well as means regarding this isro poem platform so actually it is mainly regarding our PSLV, okay, PSLV stage 4. So PSLV is nothing but Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. So if you are talking about the progress of satellite launch vehicles in India, we have first satellite launch vehicle, augmented satellite launch vehicle, we have this Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle and GSLV, Geostationary, uh, Geo, uh, sat geostationary Satellite Launch Vehicle, okay, Geostationary, Geosynchronous, we, have, we will be having different orbits, okay, where we are going for this. Uh, launching of the satellite so here what happened so if you're talking about this PSLV normally it is having four stages stage one stage two stage three and stage four actually these three stages they are mainly used by this rocket to go to space and after going into space so these will be detached these three stages will be detached and they will be falling in the ocean but only this fourth stage which is mainly having payload that is satellite will be there and this will be mainly entering into the space and after that once the satellite which is made released into the orbit or set in the orbit so this uh, this will be so this stage 4 will be forms as a space junk okay so whenever there is increasing of space junk what happen so it will be orbiting around, around the earth right sometimes if there is any satellites will be there so this space junk and they will be coming and they will be hitting that and as you all know that space junk it is increasing with a very much rapid pace uh, according to the recent records and recent re, uh, recent studies which mainly says that there is increasing of the space junk and we need to tackle with that space junk so here this poem it is one of the important opportunity actually isto which made a demonstrated in 2019 itself and from 2019 this 2022 we are seeing a small upgradation that is mainly seen in this poem platform so we are going to see all those things in detail so this article is important from your science and technology which mainly comes under this gs paper 3 and now let us try to see the context if you see context it mainly says that isro indian space research organization which mainly achieved the feat of successfully launching this pslv orbital experimental module okay pslv orbital experimental module that is poem so if you see details it mainly says that here the poem that is pslv orbital experimental module which is an experimental mission by isro actually it mainly performs in orbit scientific experiments during the stage fourth of uh, pslv launch vehicle orbital platform so once whenever we are mainly launching this rocket okay let us say this is a rocket 
So whenever we are launching this rocket, it is mainly entering into the space. And after that, these three stages, they will be mainly falling into ocean and only this uh, payload part, okay, upper part of this rocket it will be like this, right? So here we will be having this payload or satellite. So this will be launched and this part will be like a space junk. So this PSLV it is a four stage rocket and the first three stages they mainly fall back into the ocean and the final stage that is PS4 which is mainly going to launch a satellite into orbit which mainly ends up as a space junk. And now recently we launched this PSLV C353 mission under the C3 satellites were launched most of them are Singapore satellites. So here this, the spent final stage will be utilized as a stable platform. Now this PS4 okay, stage which mainly used as a stabilized platform to perform experiments. Okay, So we have NGs that is navigation guidance control unit. So by this we can control this. So if you are talking about this PSLV rocket, so here we have four stages. So that is PS1, next one is PS2 that is stage 2. Next one is this is stage 3 and this is stage 4. Okay, that is payload. We have satellite here. And if you are talking about what does it carry. So here this poem which mainly carries six payloads which mainly includes two from Indian space startups, uh, the Gandhara and as well as Dhruva space. And next one here is this poem will derive its power from the solar panels mounted with the PS4 tank and lithium ion battery. So the first time in 2019 here NASO demonstrate, uh, sorry ISRO, not NASO, ISRO, ISRO demonstrated this poem. At that time it said that they are going to install only this lithium ion battery and now they said that they are going to install even the solar panels. So this is one advantage or this is one update that we can see. And it also carries dedicated control thrusters using this helium gas storage. And the next topic here it is regarding solar power project. So India's largest floating solar power project commissioned. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under environment and ecology. So regarding this uh, floating solar power project there is one question which appeared in this 2022. So recent prelims there was one question. Okay so now let us try to see this topic in a great detail. So if you see context, it mainly says that India's largest floating solar power project is now fully operational. Okay, So India's largest floating solar power project, now it is operational. So if you are talking about that India's largest solar power project that is Ramagundam solar power plant. So here the capacity here is 100 megawatts and mainly expected to open in May 2021 but it has been delayed. Actually it opened but the full fledged operation that is mainly going to happen now. So here solar power plant is being set up at this Ramakundam thermal power plant reservoir and it is mainly set up in this 450 acres of reservoir and it mainly commissioned by this NTPC that is National Thermal Power Corporation and actually the important aim it is to reduce the carbon footprints and we want to focus on our green energy production as well. So if we are talking about floating power projects or floating solar power plants in India, yes floating solar power plants first of all we came up in Kolkata in 2014 and currently and currently if you see the largest floating power plant in India which is mainly located in this reservoir Vainat Kerala okay and it have the capacity of this 500 kilowatts. And if you are talking about these types of the solar power plants, we have concentrated and we have floating. So concentrated means we are mainly fixing with mirrors on land and as well as on our terraces that will come in this concentrated. And floating means we are mainly mounting the structure on the surface of the water bodies. So here you can see this. So this is concentrated solar power plant and here in the water we are mainly going for this, uh, this uh, arrangement. So this is called as floating. So if you are talking about what are the advantages of this floating solar power plant. So these power plants they are compact and installation and even decommissioning are much easier. So installation and decommission will be very much easier and there is no need of any land. Land is not required at all and the cooling systems of this floating solar power plants are simpler and it's also very much natural so that it will be also economically and environmentally friendly. So these are some important, ad important advantages. So now let us try to see next topic it is regarding nitrogen absorption plants. So as you all know nitrogen is one of the important key component for the development of plants. So even if you are talking about any crop per se we are mainly using some fertilizer. 
So in this fertilizer, what will be the composition? We have nitrogen, we have potassium, uh, potassium. we also have this uh, phosphorus. Nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, they are three important components. They are present in the per certain ratio. So let me know what is the ratio of this nitrogen, potassium, and uh, phosphorus in this fertilizer in the comment box. Yes, nitrogen is very, very important. So here you might have studied about this nitrogen cycle. So there we have studied about this nitrogen which is mainly absorbed by even plants. So to absorb this nitrogen, we need to have root nodules in the roots of the soil and so plants. For example, if you are talking about any leguminous plants and if you are talking about groundnut plants, we have this legumin uh, nodules, root nodules such that they can absorb the nitrogen from the atmosphere. Okay, so this article which is mainly talking about new pathway to regulate this nitrogen absorption in plants. Okay, so now let us try to see context. So if you see context, it mainly says that recently researchers, they may lead, uh, lead, uh, researchers may be led by this National Center of Biological Sciences in Tata instead of fundamental research, they mainly found a new pathway. They mainly found a new pathway which mainly regulates absorption of this nitrogen. So they mainly regulate this absorption of this nitrogen in plants. So here if you see here in this image that you can see on the screen, here you can see small small nodules are there. So those are called as root nodules. So because of this root nodules that will be helpful for this nitrogen fixing. Okay. So if you are talking about the new pathway, they mainly came up with one gene that is MAD, MAD S27. So it mainly regulates this nitrogen absorption in the plants because it is also involved in the root development and stress tolerance etc. Actually this gene which mainly activated by this microRNA or MIR444. So if you see the researchers, they mainly studied the mechanism both in the rice and as well as tobacco that is in the monocotyledon plants and as well as dicotyledon plants. And this research which mainly published in the journal of experimental botany. So if you see nitrogen is one of the important micro macronutrients which are necessary for this plant growth. So actually this nitrogen which is also part of chlorophyll. Okay, so what is this chlorophyll? So in the leaves we have this chlorophyll. So because of this chlorophyll, it mainly gives a green color to the plants. And even amino acids, nucleic acids and as well as among others. So for all these things nitrogen is very very important. And it is mostly derived from the soil where it is mainly absorbed by the roots in the form of nitrates and as well as ammonium. So nitrates they also play an important role in controlling this genome wide gene expression which in turn control the root system architecture, flowering time, leaf development etc. And next one here is so in this way roots have a wide range of actions and they will be absorbing the nitrogen and this nitrogen which is mainly absorbed that will be converted into this nitrates okay and this nitrates will be very much help for the plant growth and if you're talking about sometimes we can see there will be nitrogen overuse also so yes nowadays here if you see the farmers to increase the productivity they started using large amount of this fertilizer so because of this we are mainly seeing that nitrogen overuse which is also seen in the farms so here because of this nitrogen overuse so that will mainly lead to the dumping of nitrogen into soil so whenever there is dumping of nitrogen into soil which happen that will lead to accumulation of this nitrates in the water and as well as soil okay accumulation of this nitro nitrates and as well as soil that will mainly leads to greenhouse gases so to avoid this yes optimum use of nitrates that should be made and further we need to focus on the entire process of this nitrogen absorption occurs in the roots and as well as we need a well development of roots as well so here one important plant hormone so if you're talking about plant plant hormone we have auxins gimberlins cytokines okay ethylene so these are some important plant hormones that i can remember now at the at this point of time because i studied those in my seventh class or eighth class i think so so even in my 10 standards i studied about this auxin gibberlins so each and every uh, hormone which have the different function as the different hormones in our body how they are functioning so in the same way hormones in the plants they will be also having a typical function and if you're talking about auxin function so it will be focusing or it will be helpful in the well development of roots in all the plants so if you're talking about what is the role of this new pathway there is micro rna or this mi triple four which mainly signifies this or specific to this monocotyledons and here here when it is not made its target that is MADDS27 it mainly produced in excess 
and it can improve the biosynthesis and transportation of this hormone auxin. Okay, so this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. Title says 2 degrees temperature rise can damage earth species. So this article which is mainly talking about increasing of temperature indirectly is talking about global warming. So if you are talking about global warming means we can connect to climate change, we can connect to increasing of greenhouse gases or greenhouse effect. We can talk about increasing of use of fossil fuels. It is one of the important reason for this increasing of greenhouse gas emissions. And we can talk about renewable energy here to tackle this uh, greenhouse effect. So these are some important dimensions that you can think regarding this topic. So if you see context, it mainly says that global emissions are expected to cause planet to continue heating rapidly over next few decades, prompting the global average temperature to shoot this Paris climate agreement target, which mainly aim to limit warming between 1.5 degrees centigrade and as well as 2 degrees centigrade. So actually in our Paris agreement or Paris climate deal, so we mainly have one pledge that we are going to decrease this, decrease this uh, global warming by 1.5 degrees to 2 degrees centigrade. But here this study which mainly says that what will be the consequences of this increasing of global temperature or its temperature. So this is about this study. So this study which mainly said that so because of this increasing of temperature, yes, we will be having some irreversible impacts or irreversible extensions and even that damage will last to 10 to 1000 of species. Okay, so here just a few years of global temperature about 2 degrees centigrade that could transform world's best imported ecosystems. So world's best or Im most important ecosystems that are going to transform whenever there is at least a temperature change or increasing of global temperature about 2 degrees centigrade. So the consequence of this exposure that could be irreversible and that even include tropical forest which is mainly turning into savanna. So here whenever there is increasing of temperature, yes, we are going to see the, ex the changing or transformation of this uh, tropical uh, forest into savannas. So here we need to focus on taking up some measures to control this climate change and as well as to decrease the global temperature. So this is the one way forward. And next topic is regarding antibiotics development. So the title says why India should support antibiotics development. So this topic is important from your GS paper 3 under science and technology. Here we need to talk about antibiotic resistance and what is the impact of this antibiotic resistance and even what are the steps that are taken by government of India to control this antibiotic resistance. So here context which mainly says that a recent report from this global research on microbial resistance report which mainly says that about 4.95 million people they suffer from at least one drug resistance infection okay which leads to 1.27 million deaths and if you're talking about details it mainly says that antimicrobial resistance is one of the major public health problems that we are mainly facing and it is mainly contributing to the 30 percentage of the deaths due to this neonatal sepsis across india and this is mainly because of this multi-resistant drug, multi-resistant hospital acquired infections. So your 30 percentage of this uh, COVID-19 deaths in India, they are mainly because of failure of this antibiotics to fight against this bacterial or secondary bacterial infections. So here, because of this irrational use of this uh, drugs, especially antibiotics, and even farmers, general public, they are using this uh, antibiotics. So if you are getting cough and cold, you will be going to nearby medical shop and you will be getting uh, this antibiotic and you will be taking antibiotic just for one day or two days and you are not even completing the course of that soin's antibiotic. So because of this, that would lead to antibiotic resistance. And this one is inadequate infection control measures in hospitals and even there is no, if there is no proper sanitation, then that will lead to coming up with super bugs. And if you're talking about need, what is the need here? We need to tackle with this uh, antimicrobial resistance crisis and we need to focus on robust investment in research and development of new antibodies and we need to focus on rapid and affordable diagnostics and we need to strengthen the inf infection control and as well as prevention practices, etc. And here we need to focus on especially research and development 
and actually one important step which is taken by the government here is banning of streptomycin as well as tetracycline in agriculture. So because of this that will lead to promotional use of cholestine in poultry farming. And next here, next one here is, so what are the steps which is taken by the government to ban the streptomycin tetracycline that mainly led to increasing of this cholestin, okay, cholestin use in this uh, poultry. And because of this now we are seeing cholestin uh, resistant bacteria which is mainly found now. And as you all know India which had a good reputation, good name, and India is also called as a pharmacy of global south. And there are number of numerous uh, or very large number of manufacturing plants are present. So we need to focus on investment and early research and development regarding the saving of antibiotics. And we need to have a proper robust investment as well. And we need to focus on some specialized training and investment. So these are some important steps that can be taken for the drug recovery or drug discovery and as well as development of a drug. And if you're talking about some facts regarding this antibiotic resistance, so antibiotic resistance, it is a resistance which may be acquired by microorganism. Per se, I can talk about bacteria, virus, fungi, parasite, etc. Against these antibiotics drugs or antimicrobial drugs, for example, antivungus, antivirals, antimarials, antihelminthics, etc. to treat the infection. So because of this antibiotic resistance, even though if you're taking number of treatments, it will be not effective. Okay, so here even WHO, that is World Health Organization, which has identified this antimicrobial resistance, it is one of the top 10 threats to the global health. And now let us try to see what are the measures which are mainly taken by the government of India to address this AMR, antimicrobial resistance. So if you're talking about the programs, actually government of India, which came up with this national program on this antimicrobial resistance containment and this program which mainly launched in 2012. And under this program, this antimicrobial resistance awareness network, which has been strengthened by establishing the state medical colleges. And apart from that, we also came up with this national plan on this AMR. And we came up in year 2017. So the important aim it is to involve various stakeholders, ministries and departments. And next one is antimicrobial resistance surveillance and research network. I said it mainly launched in year 2013 to generate evidence and as well as to capture the needs and patterns of drug resilient infections in the country. And next one here is AMR and International Collaboration India Council of Medical Research. Recently it had been taken initiative to develop new drugs, medicines through this international collaborations. And next one is Antibiotic Steward Program. So actually this program is mainly initiated regarding this Antibiotic Stewardship Program. Actually, it is a uh, pilot process, okay, across the country to control the misuse and, and overuse of this antibiotics. So now, let us try to see the next topic is regarding the moon. So actually, this article is mainly talking about capstone. So now, let us try to understand this topic. So this is important from your science and technology point of view, which mainly comes to your GS paper 3. So if we are talking about this title, it talking about moon. So if you see context here, NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration came up with this capstone spacecraft and this spacecraft which mainly launched from this New Zealand on June 28th and actually it mainly going to reach this moon by November 13th. So if you see details, it mainly says that so this capstone, it is going to study lunar orbit where NASA plans to launch a space station okay and this will going to orbit around this moon in the stable path so if you're talking about full form of this capstone which mainly stands for Sir, uh, cis lunar autonomous positioning system technology operations and navigation experiments so aim here is to reduce the risk of future spacecraft by validating innovative in navigation technologies and they are also coming up with verifying of this dynamics of this halo spaced orbit as well so this is about this topic and this is the image and if you are talking about yesterday's question the first one is regarding Kushnas. So first one is Kushnas or nomadic people they originally from this steppes of north central Asia. Kushnas rulers they were the first to issue gold coins yes and next one is they were also introduced the new elements of this cavalry and techniques of war yes. So these three statements are correct so correct option is four all the above. And next question is regarding Mauryas, which of the following was not a cause for decline of Mauryas. So first one here is deforestation of Ganga Valley that led to increasing of flood. Yes, this is one reason. 
and this one is ban of animal sacrifices that led to popular uprising not at all next one is certain uh, powerful officials they could not be controlled by the later Maur Mauryans yes and increased expenditure of these various sorts yes so here Banning of animal which is not given actually Ashoka he mainly said that we can, we can go for banning of animals for this uh, anim, uh, god sacrifice for the god but in the royal kitchen every day two peacocks and deer will be slaughtered he didn't say about the slaughtering of animals and now let us try to see today's question the first one is regarding Buddhism second one is regarding Vedic economy so please try to read these questions and give me the correct option in the comment box and now I want to make a small announcement so here in Rathod Science Academy, we came up with this mains answer writing practice course and this course it is going to start from the Monday that is from tomorrow and here this uh, course it is very very useful because we are mainly giving you weekly targets and based on this weekly targets daily one question will be given and to this question if you write answer and if you send this question to our email ID there will be evaluation and there will be one to one mentorship will be there. This course is absolutely beneficial and the image that you can see on the screen. So at the top you can see one India map. So in this format the correction will be happens. So the cost is very very affordable that is just 7200 rupees for one year. And now let us try to see one more announcement. So we came up with this foundation course for 2023 and 2024. So this two years course is very very useful to get conceptual clarity. And even so this will be very much helpful to clear your UPC mains prelims as well. So we are mainly focusing on uh, focusing on concept clarity. So there are more than 600 hours of classes are present, and now the course which is offered at a discount price, so that you can get this course within this 49,000 rupees itself. So try to join this course. So this will be very very useful. And now one more thing I want to say here is if you want to get the PDF of this class, you can join the Telegram channel. Link is given in description box. And now let us try to see today's Hindu PDF. So this is our today's Hindu PDF and date is July 3rd and this is Delhi edition. So I want to ask one thing students whether I have to take only Hindu analysis or, or I am taking this Indian Express articles, uh, All India Radio articles and even PIB articles and Hindu articles together so that I am thinking that I will be covering current affairs comprehensively but many students are commenting that you have there is like uh, you can cover only Hindu but not all these things. So please let me know your suggestion in the comment box that shall I continue only with Hindu or I can take the articles of this Indian Express Hindu PIB and as well as down to it sometimes. So let me know in the comment box don't forget about this. So first article it is regarding Udaipur case as you all know that in Udaipur uh, one person who was mainly beheaded uh, by two culprits actually those culprits they have some links with them uh, with some terrorist organizations as well. So we know about this case. So after this Udaipur case, NIA to take uh, to take up a probe to Amaravati killing. So in Amaravati also there was one killing which mainly happened recently. And here NIA which is mainly going to take this case as well. So here you need to know about what are the functions and what is the mandate of this NIA. So this is very important from your prelims. And next topic you can move on. And here in this states page you can see one article and one infographic I found uh, it is very very nice that is about the salt production in Tamil Nadu. So recently here in the salt sector we discussed one article that the salt sector which is mainly facing crisis because they are not getting proper uh, price for their salt in the market. Okay so here this uh, image which mainly says that salt production in Tamil Nadu has increased because of uh, continuing dry weather here. So here you have to know about what is the salt crisis and you have to refer that topic. And next topic is regarding one species of plant that is Chen Kurinji from Chen Kurinji. So here title says that saving Chen Kurinji from climate change. So here actually this Chen Kurinji uh, tree which is mainly seen in this Shandone wildlife sanctuary which mainly derives its name from this uh, Chen Kurinji. Actually this species which is mainly endemic to this Agastamala Biosphere Reserve and it is mainly belong to this and Cardiaceae family and actually this tree was once abundant in the hills but now it is very very less why because of uh, climate change it has some impact on this uh, species and even we can see the uh, trees become old and they are not generating much fruits and as well as seeds so that because of this low generation of performance that is mainly seen 
and because of this we are seeing there is a negative trend of its population in this area okay if you are talking about this plant it is having a high medicinal values okay it mainly used for decreasing of this blood pressure that is mainly used for this hypertension and even it can be used to treat this arthritis as well okay so these are some medicinal properties of this plant tree and if you move on you can see here in this page number 7 in this newspaper you can see US born on religious freedom biased so actually this article is mainly talking about United, United States Commission for International Religious Freedom USCIRF okay so it is mainly talking about the contents of uh, communities uh, like minorities and human rights advocates and media okay so here recently you have to know about this religious freedom index okay which organization which is releasing and what is india's rank so why we are performing bad so you have to know that thing and next topic is regarding new book explores gandhi's role in champaran satyagraha so this topic is also very important and if you move forward here you can see restoring the sun temple exquisite uh, ex exquisite carving so this article is mainly talking about konark sun temple so if you have completed your art and culture you will be know about this temple architecture of this konark sun temple so this is also very important and here you can see one article which is important from your environment and ecology that is india adds 540 species to faunal database so here about 540 species of this faunal database which is mainly added in this 2021 okay so it is also one important thing that you have to know and you can read this article completely and there is one article in this world page that is five killed in earthquake in southern iran so you have to know about some facts regarding this earthquake which is important from your geography point of view and here in the science and technology page you can see the first article is regarding nitrate absorption i discussed about this topic and this one small article here is talking about child hepatitis so recently in uk there is increasing of case of this hepatitis in children so you have to know about some facts regarding this hepatitis and if you come down you can see here uh, two degrees uh, de temperature change okay so this article i discussed and there is one article regarding antibodies development i discussed this topic and this faq page you, you can see article regarding g7 so i discussed this topic number of times you can re you can refer that article and even here this article regarding this gst regime so here uh, we celebrate this uh, we already celebrate the fifth anniversary of this gst day so because of this this is a news and you can go through this topic so actually and here you can see one long article regarding measuring of earthquakes so actually you have to know about what is this richter scale okay and you have to know about the magnitude of this earthquake and intensity of earthquake okay so here you have to know what are the reasons behind this earthquakes so because of faults because of uh, dam induced earthquakes and we can see there are different types of earthquakes which are mainly because of different causes and you have to know what is the seismic waves that is a uh, earthquake waves like p waves uh, uh, p waves and as well as a uh, okay that is a body waves and as a surface waves p waves and secondary waves primary waves secondary waves long waves and relay waves and how this earthquake is measured so we have one scale that is a richer scale you have to know about amp amplitude and as well as a intensity of this uh, earthquake and you have to know what is a richer magnitude scale and you have to know about important zones which are present in india we are having only four zones earlier we have zone one to zone five now the zone one is not there now we have zone two to zone five and and you have to know about what is the role of this early warning systems as well so these are some important topics that appear in our today's hindu newspaper and please leave your suggestion in the comment box whether i have to take only hindu or whether i have to take uh, important articles from different sources so please let me know your com suggestion in the comment box for sure don't forget about this so by this i'm concluding please subscribe to rathor science academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much